Okay, so let's go ahead and put your math skills to work on solving this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Can a pump rated at 35 gallons per minute empty a 15,000 gallon pool in under six hours? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so before I show you the answer, let's just make sure you understand the question because some of you might be confused about what a pump rating means. So this simply means a pump rated at, simply means this pump is able to, or has the capacity or ability to move, let's suppose say 35 gallons of water in one minute. So if we had a bucket of water and it had 35 gallons, this particular pump could empty that bucket out in one minute. So that's what this uh, uh, pump rating uh, indicates. Now, another thing about this question is the answer is either going to be yes or no. In other words, this pump is either going to be able to empty the pool out in six, hour, six hours or it isn't. So when you answer this question, Again, the only answer here is uh, yes or no. Make sure to back up your answer with mathematics. In other words, justify your conclusions. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. If you did this right, okay, you said no, this particular pump cannot do this. And of course, you have the math uh, to back up that answer. But if you have the math to back up this answer and you said no, well, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in figuring out basic math word problems that involve rates. Because this thing right here, 35 gallons per minute is something called a rate um, in mathematics. And when you think of rates or when you see something like this, we must use proportions to solve these type of problems. Now I won't say must, but it's typically uh, this is what we do, and this is a huge important topic in math. So if you're uh, confused about what's going on here, well, just stick with me for a couple of minutes, and you too will be a certified professional expert in rates. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going here. So again, here's the problem. And anytime you're dealing with a math word problem, always use the rule of three. In other words, read the problem three times. Make sure you understand everything about the problem, particularly the question. Now let's suppose some of you are uh, math students in a class and you're taking a test, quiz, exam, whatever the case might be, and you're confused about a question or some an aspect or of a part of a question. You're like, I don't really understand what the question means. Always raise your hands. Always, always, always ask questions, okay? That is a huge part of learning. So uh, even if your teacher can't tell you, uh, you know, can't clarify what something means, let them, you know, um, in other words, always ask, because sometimes you'll get lucky. A teacher might be like, oh, you know, this is what this means, or do that. So anyways, always ask if you're not sure about something. But of course, we went over this particular problem, and we need to understand how we can approach this problem to determine whether this pump can in fact empty this 15,000 gallon pool in six hours. So uh, what you wanna do in any math word problem, uh, if possible, is model or visualize the problem. And of course, here we can kind of maybe sketch out a little pool, kind of see what's going on and maybe uh, look for clues if we can uh, visual, kind of visualize or model the problem. So uh, here is our lovely pool. It has 15,000 gallons of water and we want to empty it out with this pump and this pump can um, move 35 gallons per minute. Okay, this is the rating of the pump. So is this going to be enough uh, pumping capacity uh, to empty this pool in six hours? Well, of course, we need to figure this question out. But the first thing we need to notice <clears throat> is that we're dealing with a rate. Okay, this is a huge topic in mathematics. 
anytime you have something or you see something with a forward slash, okay, matter of fact, let me go up here and let's just take a couple, uh, look at a couple examples. So like miles per hour, okay, or kilometers per hour, whatever the case, meters per second. Here, you'll sometimes see, you'll see it this way, meters per second, or you'll see this P right there. This means miles per hour, okay? So when you see the word per, okay, you want to be thinking about a rate. Now, what is a rate in mathematics? A rate is effectively a fraction, okay? That's what it is. And when you um, think about rates, we also have something its kind of cousin uh, is a ratio, okay? And so when we have rates and ratios, we are talking about uh, fractions with particular units of measure. And the way you solve rates and rate and ratio problems is by using a proportion. And that's what we're gonna be doing here in a second. But let's just make sure we understand what 35 gallons uh, per minute means, okay? So again, this is a rate, but it's effectively a fraction, okay? So it's 35 gallons per is the fraction bar one minute. So this pump can move 35 gallons per one minute, and there you go. So now we have expressed uh, this pump uh, rating as a fraction. Uh, so now what do we do with this? Well, we need to uh, recognize again that, hey, we do have a rate here. So light bulbs uh, and sirens should be going off. Anytime you're like, oh, I see you know, a rate or a ratio, we want to use proportions to solve this. So let's go ahead and see what we're going to do, okay? Well, again, we're going to be using a proportion, but what is a proportion in the first place? A proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. Now you can see here, I already set up the problem, but let's just do a quick review for those of you that don't know what a proportion is. So here is a fraction one half, okay? Now, can you think of another fraction that is equal to one half, or equivalent to one half? Well, if you're like, well, Mr. YouTube Math Man, how about five over 10? I would say, wow, that is perfect. Uh, you, but you can have uh, three over six, four over eight, have any number of fractions. But here's the deal. If we have one fraction and it's equal to another fraction, by definition, this is a proportion. Now, remember, I just uh, uh, finished telling you that r a rate and a ratio are fractions, okay? So when we have two equal rates or two equal ratios, uh, we in, um, also have a proportion, okay? But you could just have a simple setup like this where you're not um, dealing with rates or ratios, you're just dealing with strict fractions. But here is the deal. When you have a proportion, again, two equal fractions, one property here that you want to always remember is something called the cross product. So in other words, when we cross multiply, two uh, times five here is 10, and that's equal to one times 10. So 10 is equal to 10. This is called the cross product. So when you have a proportion, uh, the cross product is always true. And we're gonna be using the cross product to solve this problem. But uh, let's get back to our actual um, information here. So we have this rate, okay? So again, we have the rate of the pump, but we can set up another rate here, okay? So we have a rate equal to a rate, or a fraction equal to a fraction. In other words, this is a proportion. So let's see how we set this up. Okay, so here again is our pumps information. Now notice the numerator, okay, is gallons. Okay, that's the unit of measure. And by the way, by the way, uh, a rate by definition is a fraction where we're comparing two completely different units of measure. So uh, let's take, for example, miles per hour, okay, miles per hour. So that is, of course, miles per hour written like so. But miles is measuring what? That's distance and the um, uh, hours is measuring what? Time. So we're comparing uh, distance with time, uh, two completely uh, separate um, uh, units of measure. So this is what a rate is. In this particular case, we're comparing a volume with um, uh, time, in case of gallons, with minutes. Okay, so again, when we have our rate set up, let's just be very careful and observe that our gallons are in the numerator, okay, our volume or uh, the unit of measure of gallons is in the numerator, and the minutes is down here in the denominator. So what we wanna do is say, okay, well, if this pump can move 35 gallons in one minute, 
it can move 15,000 gallons in how many minutes? So we're going to set up another rate over here, another fraction, but we're going to be very careful here. We're going to put gallons in the same uh, location in terms of the fraction. We're going to put it in the numerators, 15,000 gallons over X minutes. Okay, so this pump can move 15,000 gallons in how many minutes? Well, we don't know, but we do know it can move 35 gallons in one minute. So uh, this time will be proportional. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And again, this is a very, very uh, huge, big, important topic in math. Very, very common type of math uh, word problems or proportion rates and ratio type of problems. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. So now what we're going to do is use the cross product to solve for x. All right, so let's go ahead and take uh, the next step which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I desperately need your support to grow my channel. Matter of fact, if um, if it wasn't for people like yourself, you know, taking the time, you know, your precious valuable time, and I recognize that, you know, to watch this video, well, you know what, I couldn't do what I wanna do, which is to reach as many people as possible and help as many people as possible in mathematics. So I definitely need your support and um, although right now I have like, I think it's like 510,000 subscribers, that's a huge, crazy number as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully, you know, this video is being watched uh, far in the future where this number is much uh, bigger. But every subscriber, okay, for me personally, I look at as a student. But I do need your support in order to grow my channel and reach as many people as possible that can benefit from my instruction in mathematics because there's nothing worse than having a person saying, I hate math, I'm bad at math, and it's really not their fault because they're frustrated because they're not getting the instruction they need. And I really want to share my years and decades of experience to anyone out there that could benefit from it. Okay, so if you're going to subscribe, by the way, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. Okay, so here is our uh, proportion. Now, I'm, I'm not going to keep the units of measure in there for now because we know that X is in minutes. Uh, let's just kind of review. We had gallons up here, minutes over here, gallons right here, and minutes down here. So we have 35 over 1 is equal to 15,000 over X. So we want to solve for X. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use the cross product. So 35 times X is 35X. And that's going to be equal to 1 times 15,000, which of course is 15,000. So we have this basic equation here. 35X is equal to 15,000. So to solve for X, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 35, and we get x is approximately equal to 428.57. Okay, so what does that mean though? Well, x, again, its units of measure was in minutes. So the question was, can this pump uh, empty the pool in under six hours? Well, we're not you know, quite there yet in order to make a determination because we need to figure out how, how many minutes uh, right here, how many hours we have in this particular amount of minutes. Okay, so we need to convert minutes to hours. So I'm going to go ahead and round up. We have 428.57. I'm going to call it 429 minutes. So let's go, and go ahead and convert those minutes to hours. And that's pretty easy because all we have to do is divide by 60 and we get 7.15 hours. Okay, so it's going to take this pump approximately 7.15 hours to empty this 15,000-gallon pool. So no, it cannot do uh, the job in under six hours. But uh, one last thing here. Now, let's suppose you're like, well, you converted minutes to hours. I mean, I just divided by 60. But let's suppose you didn't understand that step. So let's just take a, uh, an additional uh, minute here to explain converting units of measure. This is really important. So we want to go from minutes to hours, okay? So how are we going to do that? Well, what we need, what I just did here by dividing by 60, this is really uh, multiplying by something called a conversion factor, okay? So we need to have some sort of equivalency. So one hour, okay, is uh, uh, equal to 60 minutes. Now this is a conversion factor, okay? And this is how you convert from one unit to another. Now this is, could be a very confusing topic. Matter of fact, it is a very confusing topic for a lot of math and science students because you have to do this uh, a lot in physics and chemistry classes, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, anyways, one hour uh, is, in one hour there is 60 minutes, but in 60 minutes, okay, there is one hour. So you actually have two conversion factors 
from hours to minutes. It's either 60 minutes uh, to one hour or one hour to 60 minutes. So which one of these do we use? Okay, well, we're going to want to use this one here, one hour to 60 minutes, not 60 minutes to one hour. Now, why is that? Well, here is the uh, kind of key. So notice here, I'm going to be multiplying by this conversion factor. I have minutes here, and I have minutes down here in the denominator. But really, this is a fraction. This unit of measure of minutes is in the numerator. It's 429 minutes over 1. So when I multiply these fractions, these units right here okay, are going to cross cancel, and I'm going to be left with hours. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of minutes, and I'm going to hours. So that's how you know whether, in fact, you're using the right uh, conversion factor. Now, Because I, if I used 60 minutes over one hour, let's put that in right here, over one hour, what would happen? Well, I would have minutes times minutes. I have to have minutes squared. So, you know, always be mindful of this. And this is really important. This is a really easy example, but this is really important, especially for those of you that will uh, continue on and, you know, take science classes or even in mathematics. There's a ton of times where you have to convert from one unit to another. All right, so here we're going to be cross-canceling minutes. So it's going to be cross-canceling minutes, excuse me. So now we have 429 times 1 or 1 hour. So that's going to be over 60, right? So 429 over 60 in the denominator, hours. So 429 divided by 60, again, is 7.15 hours. Okay, so that's a wrap for this problem. Now, if you're like, wow, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand that, but I want to be challenged with more uh, rate, ratio, and proportion problems, or maybe this is what you need to learn in school. And if that's the case, a couple quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos like this on my YouTube channel, uh, rate, ratio, and proportion word problems. But, uh, you know, if you're not quite sure what you're doing and you need, like, you know, deeper help, then uh, check out my algebra courses, okay? I have pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, and pre-calculus. Uh, that's my best full instruction. And, of course, I teach all of this thoroughly. So if you need, like, you know, a lot more help than what this little video is able to do uh, for you, well, then check out those courses. You'll find links to all of that stuff in the description. But uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.